Advise, what you're about to see in this video has done by semi-professionals. Do not try this at home. Today is gonna be a fun one. We are gonna see how far arrows go today. We have a big arraignment of, arraignment? Arrangement. arrangement. Of arrows right there in the tube. We have uh, multiple bows, we have multiple arrows, multiple fletching configurations, and we're just gonna have fun, but the biggest thing is I, I really am curious based on different helicals, different fletchings, different arrow weight, different type of arrows, what they do when they when they are shot up in the air. Like how far do they go? So to start out, we're just gonna launch one, see where it's at in the field. And also note we're a hundred percent safe. This is a giant farm. We have a giant field we're dealing with, like thousands of yards. So onward is is not that big of a deal. So let's shoot one up in the sky. Some specs, this is a uh, five millimeter arrow. It's right around 410 grains. So I just got a hundred in the front. So this is a light arrow, not a skinny arrow by any means. It's pretty standard, standard fletchings. I think just like a very standard hunting arrow. We're gonna launch this into the sky, see where it lands. Also note, I'm running a trigger release because aiming upwards and shooting a back tension is not super fun. Also, this is a Matthews V3X at 75 pounds, 28 and a half inch draw. <laughs> That's so fun just watching it freaking. That was kind of anticlimactic because nothing happens. All right, we got to go find it now. Oh, that made that worse. <laughs> I know, I was kind of... Yeah, nice windshield. There. Our windshield was really dirty and our efforts to clean it did not, did not work. This is the fun part of just trying to find the arrow. Luckily, we have bright yellow fledgings. If I had to guess, it's going to be... Around here somewhere. Right there we found it. So that wasn't <clears throat> that wasn't as far as I was thinking it was gonna be at first, but I, I think we gotta change our strategy and uh, make sure we're aiming at the same point every time. So we're gonna go readjust and I think we're gonna shoot a group now. This is what we're gonna do. Let me get up top. All right, so basic physics and chemistry is you have to aim at a 45 degree angle to get the maximum amount of distance out of an arrow or any sort of projectile. So when I just launched that one, I just kind of aimed in the sky. I wanted to see like roughly where it was gonna be. Like I probably was like, give or take 10 degrees off from 45 degrees. So, but now what we're gonna do is I rigged up this tripod and I am going to aim at that tripod at a 45 degree angle and my arrow is not going to hit that tripod because I'm going to set my sight that the arrow is going to go past it but I'll have an aiming point every single time and I'll, I'll stand according to where 45 degrees is and I'll just aim at that tripod. I'm going to do that this is with an inclinometer. In inclinometer. In inclinometer loading okay so that is zero this is a two-hand operation stand like this look down my phone that's about it so I'm just lining up my phone looking at the angle now i'm gonna mark my spot i'm gonna put my foot in the same spot every time now i say let's shoot a group we'll get our neutral group which will be 
just the standard arrows that we just shot. Nice. Standard arrows. Nice. Standard arrows that we just shot. We'll just see where we're at. We'll go down there and we'll mark our distance, see what kind of distance we get out of this. Ooh. Almost just punched the crap out of that. Let's just do two. Turkey. Let's go look. Was that a turkey? Mm hmm. Yep, that's one. Are they both over there? I don't know. Yeah. Not too far apart. Oh, yeah. Not bad. So, to make our life easier, we might shift a little bit so that they're going to land. Like right here. Let's go look out. All right. They're so not, they're not going as far as I thought they would. Not as far. That's why we have different ones. Hopefully we can we can see the reaction. One, eh, it's about 20 yards apart. So it's crazy what they do up in the air. But there's the truck way down there. We are going to use hunt wise. Oh, do you hear that turkey just firing off? So here we are. The truck is, let's mark the truck here. Truck is right there. Arrows are right here. So we'll drop our first pin. Let's do a general pin. Now we're gonna measure that distance. How do we do that right here? 515 yards is what we're getting. Not terrible, but I think we can do a little farther. And then we can definitely do shorter than that. Not far. So we're gonna do like a six arrow group now. I'm gonna be really precise, make sure I'm shooting, the, standing in the same exact spot, aiming at the same exact spot. I wanna see how good of a group we can get at 515 yards. And then we'll shoot some different arrows and see where they go from that main group. Very precise. Actually, what we should do. It's gonna aim over a little bit so that we're like in a more favorable spot to get arrows. Let's do this. Oh, it's really hard to aim like that, especially with the trigger. All right, hopefully those are all in a decent group. Can't even see them. You lose them like, as, I can't even see them in the air. They're just gone. Four or five, right there. And that's not terrible. One, two, three, four, five. That's about, I don't know, that's about 10 yards away. That's five yards away, like a 15 yard circle. That's about as good as, not as good as you're gonna get how we're doing it that's about as good as it's gonna get so it's about it's it's like a little less almost not as much distance so i must have changed my angle a little bit so i'm gonna mark that as our control let's see how far that is it's okay if the angle got changed just a touch 
because we're gonna shoot from this same spot now. Let's do one more control group because I wanna get closer to. We'll move closer, make sure our angle is right, do it again. Okay, we've readjusted. Actually, let me check my angle. Okay, you're at 44, 43. Oh, we're good. I'm good exactly where I'm standing now. Yeah, you're right there. You're at 46, 45, 46. Okay, we're good. See, what's crazy too is when you're shooting like this, the arrow is going several hundred yards up in the air, and there's like there's different air stuff going up there you know lighter less particles higher speeds are you talking <laughs> <laughs> i want to become a weatherman maybe that's my you should that's my calling but it is weird like it sometimes i've shot i like shot arrows at night and there's i've had some weird stuff where it's like i'm doing the same thing and an arrow will just randomly go a hundred yards to the right because it just gets this crazy wind gust up there That shot felt really good. I am punching this release. Feeling good about this. I feel like this is better, a better angle. Woo, Yahtzee. It's like hard to stay against the back wall when you're ugh, aiming up. Aiming down is so much easier. Aiming up's hard. All right, let's go see where those are at. We found them, they are closer. We got four that are actually within five yards and then one's a little bit further. Not sure what's up with that, but I think we go, I, I might leave one arrow standing up in the middle of that group and then we'll shoot some other arrows and see where we're at. Yeah, so we're still we're still at about 500 yards, give or take. I feel like all the shooting that I've done like long distance like this, the average hunting arrow, if you aimed it at 45 degrees, is gonna go about 500 yards. But now we're gonna see what some other ones do. But one, two, three, four. I'm just gonna drop an arrow right here. I don't know why that one went further. Maybe it got a weird wind thing. Maybe I was aiming wrong. But we'll just go like this. That'll be our, that'll be our control. Okay, so now we are gonna shoot two different vein configurations. We have the same arrow, so it's about 410 grains or so. This one is a five degree helical. So pretty much this is making the arrow spin at a way faster rate and is getting more drag i don't know how much more drag but more wind is affected by this and essentially i think it's going to slow the arrow down quite a bit this one on the other hand has i think just like a one degree offset and very small veins so we're going to see how these do compared to the group we just shot Okay, now we are going to do a no fletched arrow. So this is the, the same arrow, same weight configuration, but no fletchings. This one might be really hard to find, but now there's essentially no drag. So, or, you know, less drag. There's the drag from the shaft, but not from the arrows. Wow, I hope we find that one. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know if we're gonna. Now, for my next trick. Not that one. Not that one. This one. This one is an 85 grain tip. So this is like, you know, just under 400 grains. No flexions again. I'm just curious if that little bit of weight difference matters hopefully we find out 
All right, I think I'm just gonna run through the dock here. So this one, this, I, I took photos of the weights last night. Let's look. This one is 500 grains. So about 100 grains more. So theoretically, this one is not gonna go as far. Theoretically. But it also has littler veins. This one is a skinnier arrow. So this is a four millimeter, but it does have more fletchings. Like it's definitely got some bigger veins on it. This one weighs 466. So still kind of a heavier arrow, but it's, it's skinnier in diameter. I hope we're gonna find all these arrows. It's kind of scary. This one <laughs> is an indoor arrow. And this one is heavy. And there's feathers on it. And this one weighs 640 grains. Very heavy arrow. Very large in diameter. And it's aluminum, which doesn't really matter. Very curious where this one is. Nice. Yeah, that's gonna be tricky to pull back. There we go. Oh, I could see that one for a good ways. Cause yeah. Yeah, cause of the orange. I don't think that one's gonna go very far. That's a heavy. That's a heavy, heavy arrow. What else do we got? Um, I don't know if we got anything else other than these flu flu arrows. So these are designed to not go far. They're for trick shooting. They're for if you need, like I set these up for uh, shooting turkeys with them with these giant broadheads because they need a lot of drag for steerage. Um, these are also meant for like if you're shooting waterfall or birds out of the air. They're supposed to die really fast, like die, stop, get, you know, drugged down. So. We should be able to see this one too. Probably get behind and, and know, see if we can track this one. Oh yeah, did you hear that? Oh, I still got it. Did you see it land? Yep, right in the bottom there. That what didn't go that? far at all. And it went way, way to the left. It's just literally right, right in the bottom. And I could see the wind just dragging it way over that was fun <laughs> i could i could yeah. literally watch it the whole way that was wild all right so we're gonna go see compare some distances of different vein configurations arrow weights arrow diameters and just see what we get just gonna go like this did not go far holy cow so we're just gonna say this dropped right here we have a distance of 230 because I overshot a little bit. 230 yards. Literally will cut the distance in half by having just a larger fletch on. So not much farther down the road, we have the uh, very large, what was it, 500, 650 640. grain? 640. 640 grain indoor arrow. So we're gonna drop a pin measure yeah it's not much farther so it's crazy that like two things are going to do it weight or drag is going to make your arrow like way less effective at long range that's 340 yards so just 100 yards farther than the flu flu that's the helical so it went almost as far this is really interesting because i thought that this helical was gonna put way more drag in the arrow than it did. But I mean, I mean, we're five yards short of our control, which is like a one degree offset, pretty much a straight vein. There's one over there. There's, there's a couple, I'm looking at a couple right now. Yeah. But we have this guy, definitely out of the rest of the arrows we shot that are normal hunting arrow, arrows was the least. So it, it definitely creates some drag with these fletchings. 
So we're gonna leave that. Now we have this guy, which was 460 grains for fletch. This is the same fletching that we just looked at, but it's a four fletch, a lighter arrow and a skinnier arrow. I think a skinny arrow really, really helps in this sort of situation because it's just a lot of drag, a lot of wind that you're now avoiding by running a skinnier arrow. So this one went further. This one went about 10 yards further than our control. So, you know, we can probably mark that to about the same, but to add 60 grains of weight and the extra fletching, and the only real big difference is skinnier arrow. I don't know, really shows that a skinny arrow definitely helps you with long distance stuff. So, another variant. We're learning a lot of things today. Hope you guys are too. This one is our micro vein. So right now we have the wind blowing in this direction. So the majority of our arrows and our bigger fletch arrows are moving further this way. So when we're up in the sky, the wind's pushing them obviously that way. This one is one of our furthest, one of our furthest this way. So it wasn't affected by the wind as much. And it's about 20, 25 yards further than our control. So little fletchings obviously help, less drag. And uh, we still have the same diameter arrow, same weight, same everything, but uh, went farther. Also very interesting, this one, lots of wind drag. We're way over, this is a very heavy arrow, about 500 grains, which is definitely on the heavier side for a hunting arrow. But we have these very small, stiff veins on here which I think really helped our case by making this far. Show them, we have the control over there. We have the white fletch one. Can we see that? I might have to circle them. White fletch control, helical. We are, you know, there's the mini fletch. It's, it's a little further than the mini fletch. A really stiff vein like this made it further than the mini fletch. And this is a hundred grains heavier. Very interesting. This is the small guy. So this is the 85 grain tip, no fletch. We're pretty far to the right. We are further than any other arrow we've looked at. We're probably 35 yards further than the control. So we're like 530, 540 yards. Very interesting. So we have a normal 100 grain tip, no fletching, same weight, a little heavier. Went about 10 yards further. This is the farthest arrow. 410 grain, no fletch. We can mark this and actually measure it. Farthest one, no fletch. Second farthest one, also no fletch. Next one, super stiff, small vein. Next one, super small, flexible vein. Next one, four fletch, but a skinny diameter. And our closest one of like the hunting arrow control group is our steep, five degree helical, 410 grain, five millimeter arrow. Light, lot of drag, obviously not gonna go as far. Very interesting. Also small plug, buellmerch.com. We have a bunch of hats in stock, stabilizers in stock, grips in stock. Pretty much everything's in stock, so you've been waiting for that. They're now in stock. Also, Ultraview right now, we're doing a sale. If you buy one of our recommended sites on the store, you get 10% off a scope. We never do that, so take advantage of it. To show a comparison, we have a Genesis bow here. That's 20, probably 20, 21, 22 pounds. It's maxed out. I wanna just see and show how little these guys travel. So we're gonna shoot, oh, that's not high. We are gonna shoot, sneeze, crisis alert. We are gonna shoot just straight up in the air. See how far this goes. I see it, I see it, I see it. See it glowing on the hillside? Oh yeah. So it went equal distance of the flu flu feather shooting that's wild shooting a normal arrow out of a genesis 45 degrees in the air a 20 pound bow will shoot the same as a 75 pound matthews with a flu flu that is just wild showing how much drag matters on arrows
<laughs> it's just so much fun watching them fall. All right, let's do. Uh, let's see what a flu food does out of this. This probably ain't going nowhere. Yeah, like a hundred yards. Hundred yards. Maybe. Wild. A flu food. A flu food arrow cuts the distance by like half. Or yeah, or more. About half. Right next to each other. Can you see that on camera? Two little glowing yellow deals down there. This is gonna get interesting. I've never done this before. <clears throat> I think, I mean, obviously we're gonna be safe. Like we could shoot 2000 yards and be safe. But I, if I had a guess, if we shoot this at a 45 degree angle into the sky, I bet it'll go seven, 800 yards. But there's a lot of drag on those veins that we're using. We're using, we're using stock mission crossbow bolts. That's a lot of vein with a decent helical. So they might slow down. I don't know. It's, it's tough to tell. It's definitely, how did that happen? It's definitely a bigger diameter. Like that's probably, a, you know, like five millimeters is what we're shooting for like hunting arrows. This is probably like a six or a seven. Yeah, they're like 23s, I feel like. 23s, yeah, I mean, they're, they're on the heftier side. So we'll see, it's probably gonna be not a fun time trying to find these either. All right, let's see here. Seriously guys, do not try this. We are a thousand percent safe here though. Oh. <laughs> I just punched that. <laughs> Nose on safe. All right, ready? Three. Make sure we're in all the way. Yeah. Three, two, one, launch. Dude, I just feel like that's gone. <laughs> <laughs> we may never find that one. Wow. Should we do another? Yeah. Three, two, one. Just silence, like nothing happens. Wild. All right, let's go see if we can find that. That, that did not go as far as I thought. They're right next to each other, like 10 yards apart. Huh. So, in comparison, all the arrows we were just shooting was right there on that hillside. They were all landing which is 80 yards. So, I don't know, uh, what, what's the feet per second out of that? Like four? Probably 400. 400, 410, 420, something like that. So easily, like a hundred and, probably 120 more feet per second out of that crossbow. And we're maybe 80 yards further. Wild. They were only in the ground like that far too. I really think this, thick diameter, these big veins, helical, just slow them down. Which obviously doesn't matter for, for hunting situations, but shooting far like this, very interesting.